Off. I hope so, said Aunt May. 
table as the two ladies walked in carrying Ruthie in their arms. Upon entering the hospital, Ruthie became extremely nervous and started to cry. Why are you crying? asked Aunt Blair. I don't want to see doctors, answered Ruthie. Now, honey, don't you want your headaches to go away? Yes, but no needles, replied Ruthie. I don't think they're going to take blood, said Aunt Mabel. Blood, exclaimed Ruthie, before screaming louder. Just then they turned and entered an office that had a plaque outside the door that read Pediatric Neurology. Soon a young technician said, Dr. Bernstein, who is head of neurology, ordered some scans of Ruthie's brain. By now, Ruthie was quite worked up, but the young technician said, Don't worry, honey. We're just taking pictures of your head. It won't hurt a bit. And if you stop crying, I'll give you a sticker. Intrigued at the idea of getting a sticker, Ruthie calmed down and laid underneath a huge white machine that took images of her brain. Trying not to show her nervousness, Aunt Blair said, that's my girl, as she patted Ruthie's hands, hand while the images were being processed. It seemed like hours before they saw Dr. Bernstein. He was a tall, slender man, who looked younger than he was, and he had a thick New York accent. Ruthie played happily with her stickers while Dr. Bernstein discussed the results with the two women. I don't see any abnormalities in her scans other than those identified that resulted in her cerebral palsy. Concluded Dr. Bernstein. Are you saying there's no reason for the headaches? And Blair said. Not that I can tell. Dr. Bernstein answered. Instantly kneeling down. To be at eye level with Ruthie. In order to ask him to tell him about the headaches. I need to ask you something Ruthie. Dr. Bernstein began. What happens when you get a headache? Am I in trouble? Inquired Ruthie in response to his question. No, not at all. I'm just trying to figure out how to make your headaches go away, assured the doctor. Why don't doctors have a wand like the tooth fairy? Asked the puzzled Ruthie. Simultaneously, the doctor and both ladies started to laugh as Ruthie's comment eased the tension that had slowly began to permeate the room. Ruthie, unable to find humor in her question, then asked even more confused, What's so funny? Well, said Dr. Bernstein, medical school tries really hard to make us good doctors, but I don't think they ever thought to give us magic wands. Oh, said Ruthie, in that case, I'll help you. My head hurts right now, and you have a really, really, really big rainbow around you. I do, said Dr. Bernstein with a surprise. What does it look like? as he probed her for details. You have lots and lots of yellow, some blue, and your hands are very green, like spinach, Ruthie informed the doctor. What do the colors mean, Ruthie? 
I don't know. You like yellow. Said Ruthie. What do you think we can do to make your headaches go away? Dr. Bernstein pondered aloud as he elicited Ruthie's help to solve her medical complaint. I don't know, Ruthie answered with the honesty of a four-year-old. Well, do lollipops help? Dr. Bernstein. Nope, I tried that, but I just ended up with a headache and a tummy ache. I see, said Dr. Bernstein, who was impressed with her four-year-old logic. Slowly, shortly following this explanatory conversation, Aunt Blair and Aunt Mabel took Ruthie home, and although they were relieved that nothing serious was discovered to be wrong with Ruthie. They still struggled to understand what was causing her discomfort. Ruthie continued to suffer from her rainbow headaches on and off until she was well into second grade. Over time, she learned to cope with them by imagining that she had a pink remote control that could turn them down, and she also discovered by accident one winter that wearing a hat could ease the severity of the visual stimulation that caused the headaches. One day, when Ruthie was in art class, her teacher had changed, and the new art teacher was a woman named Mrs. Nichols, who was picture perfect, bohemian, with long, flowing brown hair and a long, full, frilly skirt, with matching, with a matching T-shirt that expressed a love child philosophy, filled with hearts and flowers, and sure enough, rainbows. All of a sudden, Ruthie said, with dismay, Oh no, my head hurts. Concerned, Mrs. Nichols quickly went over to the little paint easel that Ruthie had been painting on with the watercolors. What's the matter, dear? You're always my happy girl. Your rainbow is too bright said Ruthie as she held her head. What do you mean my rainbow's too bright? Oh, I see rainbows all the time and they give me headaches. Really, said Mrs. Nichols with intrigue. I know it hurts, but can you do me a favor and draw me a picture of what my rainbow looks like? Okay, said Ruthie. Always wanting to please her teachers, Ruthie began to concentrate and drew an exact image of what she saw around Mrs. Nichols. When she finished, Mrs. Nichols picked up the picture and walked over to her wooden desk to sit down. Oh my, said Mrs. Nichols. Ruthie began to worry. What's the matter? Nothing, honey. This is amazing. You see auras. Auras. What's an aura? An aura is an energy field that everyone has, and it's divided into circles, just like your picture. Let me show you. With that, Mrs. Nichols pulled out a book filled with pictures of human beings and their auras. As detailed in much of ancient Indian art that encompasses Hinduism as well as Buddhism. Finally, someone understood that Ruthie's affliction was not an illness, but in fact a God-given gift. Music had always been a huge part of Ruthie's life. Starting at the age of 
five when Rita got her best friend's daughter, who was just a few years younger than Brenda, to start giving Ruthie voice training at the YMCA locally for free. The doctors had briefly mentioned that music could possibly help Ruthie's brain development and bridge the gap between some of the special issues that she could suffer from as a result of having cerebral palsy. Therefore, Rita asked her friend if her daughter would work with Ruthie since she was a local voice teacher. The daughter, whose name was Heather, was reluctant, but after Rita's persistence, she agreed to see Ruthie. On a beautiful fall day in the middle of September, Rita had gone to the elementary school to pick up Ruthie from kindergarten so that she could take her to her first lesson. At first, when they arrived, Ruthie was apprehensive, thinking that her grandmother was escorting her to a routine doctor's appointment. With Ruthie on her hip, Rita entered the YMCA. The two walked down the long hallway as Rita explained to Ruthie that she was going to have a voice lesson. A very confused Ruthie said, What do you mean, Grandma? There's nothing wrong with my voice. I don't need a lesson on that. To which her grandmother smiled and said, No, honey, it's singing. You love singing and your mama with your mama and the records. Barking right up with excitement, Ruthie explained, Am I going to meet Barbara Streisand? Oh, for heaven's sakes, no. If you were going to meet her, your mother would definitely be bringing you. Although she would be so happy, I'm sure she could, I'm sure she could carry you in the building because Although your mother would be so happy, I'm sure. I'm not sure she could carry you in the building because she'd probably faint. Huh? <gasps> said Ruthie. Before Rita had time to answer, they opened two large gym doors to find Heather, a tall, slender young woman who was just about the same age as Brenda, coming over to Ruthie and Rita to greet them. Hi there, cutie pie. Heather greeted Ruthie. Your grandma tells me you like to sing. Carefully taking a moment to think before answering, Ruthie says, Is this like a doctor's appointment? No, honey, not at all. Oh, man, said Ruthie, to both of their surprise. Do you want it to be like a doctor's appointment? Rita asked, well, no, Ruthie said, but I'd like a lollipop when we're done. To which both Rita and Heather began to laugh. Well, said Rita, I'll take care of that. You just be a good girl and do as Heather asks you to do. Okay, said Ruthie, reaching out to Heather, who carried her over to a Baldwin piano. Ruthie was filled with excitement when her grandma approached the piano and said, Oh my goodness, it's a Baldwin. With that, Ruthie replied, Mama always wanted a Baldwin piano. Trying not to laugh at her, Heather said, Okay, Missy, let's get started. Fully imitating her mother, Ruthie sat upstream. 
Mama 
will be very happy. Taking a deep breath, not to worry, kiddo. You're in the school. I just can't figure out how you're able to play that numbers game. She declared, oh, that's easy, said Ruthie. Robin tells me, Ruthie answered. Robin, who's Robin, said Mrs. Goodman. Oh, just think of her as a little birdie, or better yet, think of her as my own Tinkerbell. Even more perplexed, Mrs. Goodman responded, Okay, well, let's go. Find your mom and tell her how well you did. One week later to the day, Ruthie was transferred into this new kindergarten class. When she returned home from school on the first day, she was bubbling with excitement. When she entered the house with her grandmother, Rita, she said, Mommy, Mommy, guess what? Every kid in my class has a wheelchair. I love this school. They're all like me, and I don't stick out. Standing at the kitchen counter, Brenda turned off the water at the sink where she had been washing dishes and said, What? By the time Ruthie was over, by the playpen that Elizabeth had outgrown but remained in, playing and said, All the kids have wheelchairs. We all look the same, and they have special games at recess for wheelchair kids, and everyone likes me because I use a walker and they can't. Oh no, we are not having this. Where's your grandma? She's talking to the neighbor, but she'll be here in a second. Moments later, Rita entered the house. By this time, Brenda was in her coat and inches from the door. Just call.